Welcome to This Week in Medicine. It's December 20th, 2021. Uh, let's get rolling. It's been a busy weekend. Again, before the pandemic, um, current pandemic, Dr. Yamamoto could give lectures in an audience where maybe some people were not wearing masks. Um, but these days you can't do this anymore. This kind of event is out. Don't go to this kind of event. Don't attend this sort of event right now. Uh, partially masked or maskless events, no. Uh, again, this is brought to you by the Fox Health Foundation. This was my inbox over the weekend. It was all Omicron and a lot of Omicron. How do I know it was Omicron? Because I don't get this many emails usually. I don't get this many phone calls. The weekend was busy with Omicron rollout. That means that I got a lot of emails from patients who had symptoms of COVID, people who needed testing, people who had questions about monoclonal antibody therapy, people who were exposed to someone who tested positive for Omicron, questions about what kind of rapid tests to do, how long to quarantine. It was all Omicron this weekend. And why do I say it's Omicron? Because Delta virus does not happen like this. I've been fielding messages, phone calls, and emails now for months, nowhere near the volume of this weekend. And Delta doesn't happen this quickly, and Delta doesn't happen in these numbers. So it's not at all common that I will have 20 to 30 messages over the weekend that are specifically about testing for coronavirus. This weekend, there were a lot of phone calls for that reason. So that means Omicron is here. Um, this was very obvious this weekend. It was obvious to me on Friday as the weekend started that there were many phone calls way past the volume of a normal Delta coronavirus weekend. This is not Delta virus. Omicron is here in the DC area. Again, I want to point out the mass study that we talked about last week because this is how you're going to protect yourself for the next two to four weeks. Let's hope it's two to four weeks. If Omicron infection really is rapid and happens within a day or two or three of exposure, and it moves that quickly, as quickly as it did in South Africa and the United Kingdom, perhaps we will be finished with this in a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, your best protection is a mask. And your best protection is not to be with other people without a mask. So if someone is not in your social group and you don't know where they have been, don't unmask around them and don't be around them if they're not wearing a mask. Again, this was a great study. Here's the actual reference. Last week I showed you a slide where you could find this uh, story about this research study in dig.com. But if you went to the Proceedings of the National Academies of Science, you would see this study that was done at Princeton, not my university, Dr. Yamamoto's. It's an excellent study. It describes an upper bound on one-to-one -one exposure to infectious human respiratory particles exactly what we're talking about, coronavirus infection. And here's the summary. Our results show that face masks significantly reduce the risk of COVID infection compared to social distancing. We find a very low risk of infection when everyone wears a face mask, even if it doesn't fit perfectly on the face. But this study did assess perfect fit. This study did assess surgical masks versus N95 masks so let's go a little deeper because masking is what's going to save you in the next couple of weeks. This is the uh, schema or a di diagram that they used in this study to explain uh, an infected person versus the susceptible person wearing masks. This is the better fit quality mask like an N95. They used distance because they were also testing for social distancing. Um, so this is how it was set up. Then in this picture, uh, this was the person infected, this was the susceptible, so they split the mask, so this is an interaction, let's say. This is an interaction where each person is wearing a surgical mask, this is where the infected person is wearing surgical, and the susceptible person is not. All the way down here, where we have FF, that's an N95 mask. So that is both the infected and the susceptible person wearing an N95 mask. This is the mean infection risk. Look at that low infection risk for the patients who both wore N95 masks. It was 0.14. For people both wearing surgical masks, 10.4. And this is not even testing for social distancing. This is specifically comparing the relative quality 
of the masking of the infected person versus the susceptible person. So this is really a great pictorial if you want to refer to this to people who don't wear masks or are uncomfortable wearing certain types of masks. Also, you'll see that the blue mark across the nose represents the best fit. So that's when you have a, a little metal bar that goes across your nose that gives you a seal that goes down to your cheeks. So they even tested for that in this study. So think about that next time you put on a mask. What was Omicron doing in the UK last time I did this talk? Seven days ago, first death was recorded. 44% of cases in London, and it was going to be dominant in 44 hours. That was seven days ago. Updates from the United Kingdom, 12 deaths as of today, maybe more, specifically attributed to Omicron. Over 100 people hospitalized identified with Omicron. Certainly there are more people hospitalized in the United Kingdom, but of those hospitalized right now, they've identified 100. The death rate from COVID-19 and Delta in the United Kingdom was actually higher than the United States. So case rates are totally different. We're talking about different numbers of population, but it was very alarming that COVID-19 and the Delta infection in the United Kingdom were deadlier than here in the United States. That still has not been explained. The London mayor this weekend very politely declared this a major incident in a very British fashion uh, due to Omicron. Um, Obviously, it's not an incident in uh, American understanding. This is a crisis, and I think that's how an American would describe this. But in the United Kingdom, they remain their proper descriptive talents and call it an incident. This incident is that Omicron is taking over London. Remember, the, what we talked about last week, Omicron and social groups. This has happened in our area. There was a country club event that was maskless in the past week or two. A lot of people got exposed. It was probably Omicron because Delta doesn't usually spread that quickly. So a country club event, a couple of school meetings. Um, there were some large groups and gatherings in the past two weeks. Uh, a musical event at a venue where people were not wearing masks. These can now be considered super spreader events and they happened within the past week or two. Um, so Omicron's here. It spreads in social events where people are maskless. So again, for the next couple of weeks, masks are your best friend. Let's talk about Omicron therapeutics for outpatients, not inpatients. Inpatients, that means people in the hospital, have a different protocol. These protocols are extremely well developed and I will not review them here because I am not an inpatient doctor. I trust the inpatient doctors to roll out these treatments. They do know what they're doing. And especially if you are using a hospital based in a hospital system, uh, locally we have Johns Hopkins and MedStar, those protocols uh, are written by the institutions and have been carefully reviewed. So you can trust them and rely on them. They're protocols that have been in place for a while. What we've been doing for outpatients is using Regeneron uh, antibody therapy. Guess what? It doesn't work against Omicron. It works against Delta, definitely helps people with Delta COVID infection, it's an infusion. So if you were a sick person, not in the hospital, not requiring oxygen, if you were over 55 years old, this is not for uh, young people unless you're immunocompromised, you could get a Regeneron infusion. I sent some people to the Baltimore Convention Center in the past 12 months. Uh, Sibley, our local hospital, also has been giving this, but it does not work against Omicron. What does work is citrovimab. Uh, this is from GlaxoSmithKline. It does work. We only have 50,000 doses, but it's not authorized as an infusion yet for treatment. Um, so although it's available and it has been approved for use, it's being reserved for when Omicron is more predominant because we have no evidence that it works against Delta. So right now it is not being used. If you get a monoclonal antibody infusion, you're not getting this. If you're getting a monoclonal antibody infusion today or tomorrow, you're getting Regeneron. Uh, again, we don't know if you have Omicron or not, or if you have Delta, but you're not getting Citrovimab, you're getting Regeneron. Evusheld from AstraZeneca is approved, but only for prophylaxis. So generally, Evusheld is being used for people who are immunocompromised and got their COVID vaccines, but their COVID vaccines did not work. So they are eligible to get this as a vaccination, so to speak, so that they will not get infected uh, with Delta or Omicron. It does appear to work 
against Omicron, but right now it hasn't been approved for treatment. It's only been approved to use for patients who have no antibody protection because their vaccination didn't work. So will the FDA give us um, approval to use this as well as this antibody therapy? Maybe, but we have to wait for it. I have been told as of today, there will be a switch in treatments when Omicron is the predominant virus. So uh, locally and nationally, there will be a move from Regeneron to these two antibody monoclonal antibody therapies for outpatients and potentially more if they get approved. And that switch will come regionally when different regions have predominant Omicron. So you would expect maybe New York and Miami are going to or already do have predominant Omicron and Delta is going away. So in those places, these two antibody therapies might be approved and Regeneron will be stopped. Um, this is already in place locally. So if I have to order antibody treatments for my patients, I already know what I'm ordering and I should know when the switch occurs. So we should be informed about this. We know. We know a lot more now than we did last year. Part of the problem is we are not testing for individual treatment, but for making public health decisions. So if you get a positive COVID test right now, I cannot tell you, nor will the testing facility tell you if it is Omicron or if it is Delta. So right now we're accruing these numbers in order to make decisions about what is the predominant strain, but you will not be told individually whether or not you have Omicron or Delta. I will tell you my suspicion is that because of the volume of calls this weekend and emails that most of these people do have Omicron. So are the antibody infusions I'm giving people right now working? We will have to wait and see. We don't know. Paxlovid could help us. It's the pill treatment. And guess what? It does appear to work against Omicron, but it hasn't been approved by FDA yet. And this would be a great at-home treatment and it probably would help with Omicron. One note, we still don't understand the severity of this. A lot of patients are saying they have sore throat and runny nose. Because of one recent non-peer-reviewed paper, we think that Omicron likes to live in the bronchial tubes but not go into deeper lung tissue, what we call the alveoli. The alveoli are your air sacs, they're microscopic. Delta virus loves to destroy those air sacs, which is probably why people ended up on ventilators. Omicron does not appear to go into that level of lung tissue. It multiplies in the bronchial tubes, hence what we would call bronchitis. Is bronchitis as immediately deadly as pneumonia? Not typically. So again, this data has to be peer reviewed, but it is very suspicious that and probably correct, Omicron likes to live in bronchial tubes and replicate in bronchial tubes, but not invade and destroy the lung tissue. Let's hope that that is true. And let's hope that that peer reviewed data bears out to be true. Again, is that the silver lining that this is extremely mild? Well, I would say now that I have published this in our talk since December 6, this is probably the third time I've used this slide. I don't think it's extremely mild. For some people it's mild, just like original COVID, but if 12 people died of this in the United Kingdom, I don't think we can say it's extremely mild. Is it, however, rapidly killing off the more deadly Delta coronavirus mutation? That is to be seen, but it may be. Again, here is the United States where the Omicron Petri dish right now, certainly we are regionally, we're in the test tube, but let's do this. Let's put some masks over this. If we mask our test tube experiment, if we mask our Petri dish experiment, we could all be safe. We really could. You just need to up your mask game and you have to assess when you are willing to go maskless. If you wanna do a combination of at-home testing and rapid testing and quarantining yourself two or three days before an event, that may work but you cannot go to broad scale, large social events maskless because our vaccines are simply not that protective. And in combination with a very contagious virus, we really need to use masks. 
Tony's tip of the week, Medicare requires us to use an electronic medical system to order your medication from the pharmacy. So we have to use a computer-based system to order your prescriptions, which I do like because then I have computer verified records that indicate your prescription was sent, the exact time it was received at the pharmacy. And I just went through that with a patient a couple minutes ago. Three of her prescriptions were done from our office. I have screenshots from the computer. They were all done correctly. The pharmacy has filled them incorrectly. So I can give that patient verification that yes, we put the prescription in correctly, electronically. The pharmacy, overworked, undoubtedly overloaded, made mistakes. So we no longer actually pick up the phone and call in a prescription for you. We've been doing computer-based ordering for quite a while. Our ordering system and most ordering systems do not utilize the prescription numbers. So we do not need your prescription number. Don't read us off the prescription number. Don't email us the prescription number. That's utilized mostly if you're going to use mail order refill yourself. So if you pick up the phone and you call CVS Caremark, they want your prescription number, but we never use it. So don't give it to us. We don't need it. We need your prescription name, of course your name. We need the dosage of medication you take because dosages change all the time. We need how many times a day you take it. And the address of your pharmacy may actually be more important than the phone number of your pharmacy because pharmacy stores have phone numbers, but the pharmacy itself within the store has a separate number. So the address sometimes is more important than knowing the actual phone number. So fast pitch for this week, Omicron's here. Refuse maskless events. If someone invites you to an event and there are going to be a bunch of people there, a wedding, a reception, and they're checking for vaccine at the door, they're checking to make sure everybody is vaccinated and boosted. Remember, boosting may protect you 70%, but it's not 100%. So you risk getting Omicron if you go to an event maskless. So revisit your mask habits indoors, upgrade your mask. This should not be forever. This maybe will only be a couple of weeks, let's hope. The science is behind this. This is not politics. This is the science, as I showed you, of wearing a mask. Don't get Omicron now. If you want to get it in a couple of weeks, then maybe we'll have approved therapeutics. Maybe we'll have Paxlovid approved. Uh, maybe we'll have some of these uh, infusibles approved. But don't get it right now because it's not a good time. We don't have the therapeutics available to give you. So mask up. Again, we don't need your prescription number. The pharmacy location is sometimes easier to use and there is still combined nasal swabbing for all of these viruses because we are still seeing many of them circulate again address your pyramid make sure you've done everything you can for the year but you know what i'm not broadcasting next week it's the holidays so throw the pyramid out the window for a couple of weeks and enjoy yourself again this is our book thanks for your attention and have a good week